In this video, we're going to do an example using the quotient rule. So if f of x is equal to x squared plus 5 over x plus 2, find the x value or the x values where number 1, the tangent is horizontal, and number 2, where the tangent is parallel to the line 8x plus y plus 2 equals 0. So like usual, let's show visually what's going on. So if I take this function and graph it, it's going to look like this. There's going to be a vertical asymptote at an x value of negative 2, and there's also going to be an oblique asymptote on this line y equals x minus 2. If you took those two uh, terms and divided them, you would get a quotient of x minus 2, which represents the oblique asymptote. So the first question, we have to find the x values where the tangent is horizontal. Well, we know that the tangent is always horizontal at a minimum point or a maximum point. So if you notice, it's going to be horizontal here at this point. So we have to find this x value where the tangent is horizontal at that point, And then over here, it's going to be horizontal as well. So we have to find this x value. Now, how do we do that? Well, we know that the derivative of a function always gives us the slope of a tangent at a specific x value. So if we're looking for the x values where there's going to be a horizontal tangent, the slope of the tangent of a horizontal line is going to be zero. So we have to find the x values where the derivative is equal to zero because these lines here have a slope of zero. So to find the derivative, we would use the quotient rule that we went over in the previous overview video because if you notice this function is in the form g of x over h of x one function over another function so the way we find the derivative when we apply the quotient rule is we take the derivative of that top function which is 2x times the bottom function which is just x plus 2 minus the top function which is x squared plus 5 times the derivative of the bottom function which is just 1 and then that's all over the bottom function squared so it's x plus 2 squared so then when we simplify the numerator we would end up with x squared plus 4x minus 5 all over x plus 2 squared for the derivative of this function now Going back to the original question, we have to find the x values where the tangent is horizontal. That means we have to find the values of x where the derivative is equal to zero because a horizontal line has a slope of zero. Now, because the derivative is a rational function, if you remember from advanced functions, the time that a rational function is equal to zero is when the numerator is equal to zero because whenever the denominator is equal to zero, at that x value, the function will be undefined. But if the numerator is equal to zero, zero divided by a number will always give you zero. So really, all we have to solve is when this x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to zero, when the numerator is equal to zero. And then at any of those x values, as long as that it's not that x value of negative 2, where there is a vertical asymptote, then we know at those x values, the derivative is going to equal zero. So then solving that, it's going to be a quadratic equation. So it actually factors smoothly. And then you get those x values of negative five and positive one. Now, sometimes it's not going to factor smoothly. So you'd have to use the quadratic equation at this point. And it's very possible for you to get decimal answers as well. Fortunately, in this question, they weren't decimal answers. So add an x value of one here, we have this horizontal tangent and at an x value of negative 5 right here, we have this horizontal tangent. So these x values that we got here algebraically correspond well with the graph that we drew. The x value of negative 5 and 1 makes sense on the graph. The next part of the question is we have to find the x values where the tangent is parallel to the line 8x plus y plus 2 equals 0. Now, the first thing you want to do whenever you get a line in this kind of form is you want to always put it into y equals mx plus b form. So we have to isolate for the y. So if we isolate for the y, we would just bring the 8x and the 2 over and we'd have negative 8x minus 2. And now it's easier for us to work with this line in this kind of format because we can easily see what the slope is, what the y-intercept is. We can even graph it if we want. So if we actually take this line and graph it, it's going to look like this, a slope of negative 8, so the line is going downwards, and it has a y-intercept of negative 2. So the question is asking us, where on this function is the tangent going to be parallel to this line? 
So it might be parallel at some point here on the function because the function is decreasing there, so the tangent will always be negative. Notice how in this portion of the graph, the tangent is going to be positive, so we know it's not going to be at any of those x values that are to the right of negative 5. And then in this portion of the graph, it might happen somewhere here because notice how the function is decreasing up to that x value of 1. So the slope of the tangent is always going to be negative. So we have to see, is the slope going to equal negative 8? Is it going to be parallel to this line? And if it is, it will be somewhere around there because after that x value 1 to the right of it, the slope of the tangent is always going to be positive no matter where you draw it. So how do we do that? Well, we know that the derivative gives us the slope of the tangent at any x value. And if we're finding the x values for which the tangent is parallel to this line, we know that the slope of the tangent is going to equal negative 8. It's going to have the same slope as this line. So what we have to solve for, we have to solve when does the derivative equal negative 8. Or when does the slope of the tangent on this function equal negative 8. And luckily, we can just use the derivative that we found in question 1, this x squared plus 4x minus 5 over x plus 2 squared. So we take that derivative, make it equal to negative 8, and now we can cross multiply. So this negative 8 is like over 1. So we can cross multiply and then solve for x. So then when you do that, x squared plus 4x minus 5 times 1 is just that same expression on the left side. And then negative 8 times x plus 2 squared on the right side. Then what you want to do is you want to take this x plus 2 squared, foil it out, expand it, and then distribute that negative 8 inside that resulting expression. Then you want to bring everything over to the left side, and you would end up with 9x squared plus 36x plus 27 equaling 0 once you simplify all the like terms. So notice now how we have a quadratic equation to solve. And then solving that quadratic equation, it actually factors smoothly. We could factor out a 9, and then the resulting quadratic would factor into x plus 1, x plus 3. So we know our final answers are x equals negative 1 and x is equal to negative 3. Now you could have also used the quadratic formula at uh, this point, but you always want to check if it could factor smoothly, and if so, you can get those x values pretty quickly. So what does that mean on the graph? Well, it means that at an x value of negative 1, if we draw that tangent right there, it's going to have a slope of negative 8, and then if we draw a tangent at this x value of negative 3 right here, that line is also going to have a slope of negative 8. So just as a recap of what we did here, the first part we had to find where is the tangent horizontal on this function so we solve when the derivative is equal to zero. And first we had to find the derivative using the quotient rule. And then we found that it is equal to zero. There's horizontal tangents at this x value negative five and at this x value one. And then we had to find where is the uh, tangent going to be parallel to the line negative 8x minus 2. So we had to find the x values where the derivative is equal to negative 8. And we got that x value negative 3 right here if we draw that tangent and this x value negative 1 right here if we draw that tangent. Both of those tangents have a slope of negative 8. So hopefully you could still see that with the graph. There's a lot of dotted lines. It's kind of messy so just bear with me. So yeah, overall not too bad of a question. Also remember, you don't always have to draw these functions when you're given them. A lot of times they're going to be really complex and to try to draw them it's going to take you too much time. I just draw them in, in the examples so it's a lot smoother for you to see what we're doing so it sinks in a little better. But whenever you get questions like this, unless the teacher specifies that you have to draw the function, you can go straight into figuring out the algebra. But just know what to do, how to set up the equations. Here we have to set up derivative equaling 0. Here the derivative is equal to negative 8. And I tried to combine sort of two questions into one so you can get experience with uh, different scenarios. But this question should help you with a bunch of the questions in your book. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.